Welcome to the Uncle Eric Presents Crime Fiction Podcast, featuring classic radio shows, crime, murder mysteries, and suspense shows. We're so glad you tuned in for this current classic episode. But first, a few show comments and episode notes from Uncle Eric. Welcome back, folks, to another exciting episode from the Uncle Eric Presents Classic Radio Series. I am so glad you tuned in again, and hope you are enjoying listening to these exciting episodes. Today, we make another visit with Detective Boston Blackie. Today's episode is titled, Blood on Blackie's Sleeve. In this episode, a man promised to kill Blackie within 24 hours of being released from prison. Blackie faces blackmail when the man is found dead and Blackie's mechanic notices blood on his sleeve. Boston Blackie is brought to you by our friends at BoomerFlix.com. At BoomerFlix.com, you can watch thousands of the old classic television shows, classic movies, and classic cartoons you grew up with. If you're a fan of the oldie TV shows and movies, then give a visit to boomerflix.com and enjoy the oldies again. Also, please visit uncleeric.com to listen to all the currently available radio podcast categories and episodes. There are also hundreds of the old classic mystery and suspense detective television shows for you to watch as well. If you like this episode of Boston Blackie, please consider buying Uncle Eric a cup of coffee in the link below. Thanks a million. Now, enjoy this great episode with that popular detective, Boston Blackie titled, Blood on Blackie's Sleeve. Can you get me my car, Jim? Oh, Blackie, back to the Sure. Hey, Tom, get Boston Blackie's time. And tell him to hurry, Jim. <laughs> your best, Blackie. And on a double time. Well, how much do I owe you? Uh, give me your parking check. I'll figure the time. Oh, sure, sure. What you nervous about, Blackie? In a hurry, that's all. Here's the check. Thanks. Gotta stamp the time out before I can figure out what you owe me. There we are. How much do I owe you? In at 7.45 and out at 8.12. That'll be 50 cents. Hey, you keep the check. All right, here you are. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to drop it. Hey, Blackie, you sure are nervous. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Hey, what's that on your sleeve? My sleeve? Yeah, that's the, the red stuff down there by the sleeve buttons. Oh. Blackie, that, that looks like blood. What is that? That, Jim, is none of your business. And now we return to Richard Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Oh, just a minute, please. Yes? You're Boston Blackie, aren't you? Yes, but I'm in a hurry. The I've got... switchboard operator said you'd be back. I've been waiting for you for two hours. Two hours? Sorry. I'd have waited two days if necessary. Say, don't I know you? Oh, you might. I'm Carol Williams. Oh, yes. You used to be pretty friendly with a fellow named Fred Allen. Yes. That's why I'm here. Fred got out of jail yesterday. I just wanted to warn you. About what? About Fred. He's going to kill you, Blackie. You mean he's going to try? You were the one that sent him to jail. You know what he promised to do when he got out? They all promise that. Yes, but Fred is different from the others. I ought to know I was his girl for three years. I don't know why you go to the trouble of warning me about Fred. He went to prison with no love for you. Or for his brother John. Or for Bill Andrews either. But you're the first on his list. I'll take care of myself. Don't worry. Look, Fred's getting to town today. I don't know how soon there'll be trouble. Would you take my new name and address just in case? New name? Yes, I moved to an apartment in 928 Davis Lane under the name of Leslie Bond the day I heard Fred was getting out of jail. No one knows my new address or my new name. Well, I know it now. But nobody else. Look, let's stop fooling. What do you really want to talk to me about? Just what I told you. Stay out of Fred's way or he'll kill you. And I don't want him to kill you. And I don't want you to kill him. No? What do you want? Nothing but the pleasure of killing Fred Allen myself. All 
All right, all right. Wait till I get inside. All right, I said. Can I have the rings when I'm coming in or going out or taking a shower? Okay, don't overdo it. Hello? Frankie, this is Faraday. It's all right, Inspector. I won't tell anybody. I've been trying to reach you for the last hour. Well, that's swell. If it's your last hour. I don't want any of your wisecracks, Frankie. I'm in room 802 in the Midland Hotel. Oh, and you're lonesome? No, I'm not lonesome. I've got a corpse to keep me company. Bet it outsmart you. Who's dead, Inspector? An old pal of yours, Frankie. A guy who swore to kill you as soon as he got back from a vacation in the big house. Fred Arlen? That's right, Frankie. He's been dead just a little while, and I have a hunch you killed him. You're hunch drunk as usual, Faraday. I didn't murder Arlen. Anybody I can murder for you today? I don't say it was murder, Blanky. It was probably self-defense. But everybody in town knows Arlen was out to get you. Were you at the Midland Hotel a little while ago? When, when you ask me, that means you don't know. So why don't you try to find out? So long, Inspector. Blanky, you missed it. Yes? Suzanne? Yes, Blackie. Suzanne, were you at the lobby switchboard when I was down there talking to that young lady a little while ago? Oh, yes. I've been here since four this afternoon. Well, she said she'd been waiting for me for two hours. Is that right? Oh, no, Blackie. She came in about five minutes before you did. <laughs> All right, you guys, finish with those pictures and rush those fingerprints down to headquarters. We got to get that body out of here. All right, right away, Inspector. All right, you. You're the dead guy's brother, huh? Yes, Inspector Faraday. I'm John Arlen. Uh, this gun in my handkerchief. You ever see it before? No, I don't think so. You got any idea who killed your brother? No, but I'd like to shake his hand. What do you mean by a crack like that? Figure it out. Made my life miserable since we were little kids. I'd like to have killed him myself. You live in this hotel, don't you? Sure, you know that. In the room right next to this one. It's kind of convenient, isn't it? Very. Sorry I didn't have a chance to take advantage of it. Now, look. Your brother phoned room service at 816. And a waiter found him dead at 825. So he's killed between 816 and 825. Where were you at that time? I haven't the slightest idea. Well, where were you most of the evening? I'm not sure. A lot of places, I guess. Name one. Well, I was down in the lobby for 45 minutes or an hour, but I don't know just when, whether it was before or after 816. Who saw you down there? Who'd you talk to? I don't know. I bought a paper, I remember that, but I didn't pay any attention at the time. Okay, I'll check that. I may need you later. Don't go too far away. I can go now? Yeah, but just make sure you're around if I need you. I will. Oh, hello there. I'm from the Globe. Uh, aren't you John Arlen, the dead man's brother? Yeah, but I don't want to talk to reporters. Who killed your brother, Mr. Arlen? I don't know, but I'm sorry I didn't. I'll print that. Print it. Put in a headline for all I care. That's your room right next to the murder room? That's right. Put that in the headlines, too. Oh, come on, Mr. Arlen. Give me a... Pig. Yes? Uh, operator, get me Ingersoll 21561. Yes, sir. One moment, please. Police. Authors. Better leave me alone. Hello? Uh, Bill Andrews? Yes. Bill, this is John Arlen. Oh, oh, yes. Fred's been killed. Uh, yes, I know. I want to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you, too. Well, your house isn't safe. The cops will be after you. You can't come here. I can meet you in my car. Your car? You can drive a car? I can't walk, but I have special braces for driving. I'll meet you at the corner of Oak and Brewster Street so we can talk in my car. Okay. Uh, what do the uh, police know so far? Do they know much about us? Doesn't everybody? I think we'd better frame our alibis together. I'll see you at the corner of Oak and Brewster. <laughs> Amazing, Bill, the way they fixed it so you can drive a car, even though you can't walk a step. The leg braces aren't comfortable, John, but after two years, it's worth anything to get out of that wheelchair once in a while. Oh, someday they'll give you braces you can walk with. I hope so. But, uh, about Fred. I told the cops I was sorry I didn't get to kill him. When they come to me, I'd like to tell them the same thing. You might as well. You have as good a reason as I do. Maybe better. 
But I don't dare tell him that. Look, Bill. I was in the hotel when Fred was killed. You've got to give me an alibi. <sighs> oh, that's fine. Only I was in the hotel when it happened, too. You were? Did you kill I think, uh... We'd better frame an alibi for the two of us. What do you say we frame one for the three of us? Huh? Who are you? What are you doing back there? Sitting on the floor. It's very uncomfortable, too. Who are you and where did you come from? I came from your garage, Andrews. I was on my way to visit you. And I saw you wheeling yourself out to your car, so I thought I'd ride back here. Who are you? Boston Blackie, John. Another one of your brother Fred's pet peeves, remember? Remember? You're the guy he promised to kill within 24 hours after he got out of jail. Yes, but that's one worry I don't have any longer. Then you're in this as much as we are. That's why I suggested a moment ago that we frame an alibi for the three of us. Or perhaps I should have said for the four of us. Four of us? Carol Williams is involved in Fred's death, too. In fact, she mentioned both your names to me. Bill and I were at the hotel when Fred was killed. Were you and Carol there? Not together, eh? I was there, I know. And I have a hunch she was there, too. She lied about having waited for me in my apartment building for two hours. Carol hated Fred as much as I did. She could have killed him. Why did you hate him, Bill? I was his business partner in the better days. When he went crooked, he involved me. I spent a few years in prison myself. Well, that's not going to sound so good when Faraday hears it. Oh, I'd have killed him on general principles. But I didn't have any better reason than the rest of them. No better reason, only a better alibi. You can't walk. Now, look, only one of us killed him. Do you want to take credit, John? I've got troubles enough. What about you? I was in the hotel earlier tonight. Does that answer your question? We were all in the hotel. Look, we're not getting anywhere accusing each other. I say we'd better get hold of Carol. Get our stories straight. We're all suspects. Yes, four of us were in a jam, Andrews. And I think we'd better get alibis that will gel. Coming, coming, coming. Morning, Barky. Oh, hi, Jim. What'd I do, leave something in my car last night? No, I, um, I want to talk to you, Blackie. Oh, sure, come in. Thanks. What's the trouble? No trouble. Well, you wanted to talk to me. What about? Remember when you took your car out of my garage last night? There was uh, something on your sleeve. So? So, I read in the papers today how Fred Arlen was found shot to death in his room at the Midland Hotel. That was blood on your sleeve last night, Blackie. And when a guy gets shot, he bleeds. So? So, you could have killed Fred Arlen. I could tell the police about what I saw in your sleeve last night. Yes? Yeah. But for though, I could forget all about it. Um, I'll take 50 bucks on account. It's uh, 50 bucks, or do I go to the cops? Uh, now look, Blackie, it's... Hey, now wait. Now look, don't, don't get sore. Now look now, Blackie, I didn't mean anything. Honest, I didn't. Blackie, Blackie, what are you going to do? Blackie, what are you going to do? What can I do, Jim, except pay you the $50? And now, back to Boston Blackie. Four people could have murdered Fred Allen. Four people had a good reason to wish him dead. These same four people might have been in the hotel at the time Fred Arlen was killed. And one of these four people is Boston Blackie. As we return to our story, Blackie is in the office of Police Inspector Faraday. Well, Blackie, Mrs. Swanson, I don't have to waste my time chasing you around town. What are you going to waste your time doing, Inspector? Look, don't get me sore. I know you didn't kill Fred Arlen, but you're not clear of this completely. A girl by the name of Carol Williams came to see you last night, didn't she? Sure, so what? So it's just as I thought. She shot Arlen and came to see you right after. Boy, you think I don't know what I'm talking about, huh? Well, Inspector, I always think that. Okay, wise guy. I had my men check on the pistol we found in Fred Arlen's room. It was bought at Rodman's pawn shop. 
And it was bought by a girl Rodman identified as Carol Williams. And I'm holding her. Where did you say she bought the pistol? At Rodman's pawn shop. Say, maybe she bought the gun for you. I do my own shopping, thank you. Okay, Blackie. If you know what's good for you, keep your nose out of this. I'll do even better, Faraday. I'll hold my nose in the air, and maybe I may sniff something. Are you Robin? Yeah. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Now, look, are you a cop? What does it matter? Well, it matters a lot. I don't like cops. They interfere with my business, and I don't like cops' questions. They get me all mixed up. Will it help if I tell you I'm Boston Blackie? Will it help? Oh, look, Blackie, what do you want? The store's yours? <laughs> well, I don't want your store, thanks. Just a little information. Did you identify the girl who bought the gun that killed Fred Allen? Well, I hate it too, Blackie, but... Well, yes, I did. But there's something I didn't tell the police. Oh? Right after this Williams girl left my shop... A fellow walked in and asked me what she bought. So I told him she had bought a pistol. He, uh, walked in here? Well, yeah, of course he walked in. <laughs> That's a natural way for a man to come in here, ain't it? Yes, Rodman, it is. And it makes the identity of Fred Arlen's killer a natural, too. <laughs> Look, Andrews, I'm sorry to bother you. I know it's tough to get out of bed and into a wheelchair in the middle of the night, but I think I have Fred Allen's killer. It's John Allen. John killed his own brother, Blackie? Carol bought the murder gun, but a man followed her into the Rodman pawn shop. This man walked into the shop. That means it wasn't you. Oh, it was John, all right. Well? Well... Sometime later on, John stole the gun from Carol's apartment and killed his brother with it. It's that simple. Well, I... Uh, what is that I smell? Smoke? Say, I think you're right. It is smoke. Maybe we'd better investigate. I can't move this wheelchair of mine too fast. All right, I'll have it. Say, there it is, Andrews. The smoke's coming from under the door. Good heavens, the only exit from this room is blocked. Except for the window, and I'm getting out of there. Hey, Blackie, wait, help me. Sorry, pal. There's one thing I can't stand. It's fire. I'm getting out of here. Now, wait for me. I'm getting out with you. Okay, Andrews. Thanks. Thanks for what? You've just taken half a dozen very healthy steps. I thought you couldn't walk. The fire, Blackie. That's... There isn't any fire. The smoke's coming from some newspapers. I set on fire before I came in. So you can walk, Andrews, eh? All right, I can walk. So what? For two years, you've been confined to a wheelchair, supposedly paralyzed from the waist down. Did you plan on killing Fred Allen that long ago? I didn't kill Fred. You can't prove that I did. Maybe not, Andrews, but I certainly am going to try. Yes? Telegram to John Allen. All right, just a minute. Hello, John. Blackie. I want to talk to you, Blackie. Beat it. Don't close the door yet. I said beat it. You're not getting in? No. I think I am in. Uh, what do you want with me? Well, I... I just want to give you some good news. I know who killed your brother. Huh? It was Bill Andrews. You're crazy. Bill can't even walk. I tricked him into getting out of his wheelchair, and he not only walked, he ran. I'm sure he killed your brother. But I have to have proof. Will you help me get it? I can't. Faraday says your brother was killed between 8.16 and 8.25 last night. Don't you know what you were doing at that time? Of course not. I wasn't paying any particular attention to the time. I had no importance then. Uh, come in. Oh, I didn't know you had company, Alan. Hello, Faraday. Blackie, what are you doing here? Bringing personal condolences to an old friend of mine. You stay out of this, Blackie. Um, what uh, brought you up here again, Inspector? More questions? No, Arlen, I just want to tell you I checked your story about being in the lobby when your brother was killed. You were there, all right? Well, somebody saw me. That's good. Yeah, at 817, exactly. You asked the desk clerk about changing your room. Then you bought a paper. And you sat down there for, well, a good half hour. And you'd been in the lobby for some time before 817, too. Pretty good checking, Inspector. 
But uh, how does that prove John didn't kill his brother? Well, at 8.16, Fred called room service and asked for a sandwich. He was alive then. At 8.25, the waiter went into his room and found him dead. So Fred Allen was killed sometime between 8.16 and 8.25 last night. Faraday, you're wonderful. Oh, I do all right when you're not around, Blanky. Then I'm clear, Inspector? Oh, I never thought you were, guilty son. In spite of the crazy story Carol Williams has been trying to feed me. What crazy story? Well, she admits she bought the murder gun, all right. But she says you followed her from Rodman's pawn shop and stole the gun out of her apartment. Her apartment? I've never seen it. In fact, I've never been on Papers Lane in, a, in all my life. Well, ah, never mind, son. I know you're in the clear. Uh, you can come and go as you please now. Well, thank you. Well, John, now that you're cleared, you have only one thing to worry about. Yeah, Blackie? What? Faraday thinks you're innocent. And Faraday invariably bats a thousand percent wrong. <laughs> Jim, get my car for me, will you? Yeah, sure, Blanky. Uh, I don't know why I let you drive me downtown when I can ride in any squad car in town. Maybe it's because you like my company, Faraday. Uh, keep thinking that. At least it's one thing I know you're wrong about. Yeah. You're improving, Faraday. Hey, Jim, get my car, will you? I want to talk to you a minute, Blanky. Oh, excuse me, Faraday. Well, hurry it up, will you? I haven't got all day. What do you want, Jim? That uh, 50 bucks you gave me didn't last very long. I want more. Oh, sure, Jim. But I'd like you to meet a friend of mine first. Oh, Faraday, come over here, will you? Look, will you stop stalling? Let's get out of here. I think we're leaving right now. Uh, Jim, this is Inspector Faraday of the police. Huh? Now, would you still like I'll to... I'll get you uh... right away, Blanky. Give me your ticket. I'll, I'll stand for it. Here. Yeah. The timeout shows exactly one hour. That's 75 cents. Here's your ticket, Blanky. Thanks. I'll get your car out right away. What are you putting that ticket in your pocket for, Blanky? I don't know. Have it, I guess. Hey, I must have save Idis. Here's my parking ticket for my... Holy mackerel! What were you doing down here last night? You'll find out. Hey, Jim! I'm getting your car, Blackie. Never mind. Check it in again. I won't be needing it just yet. Hey, what is this? This is where we go back to the Midland Hotel, Faraday. What for? For you to go down to the room service and for me to go on the phone and show you how a dead man can call for a sandwich. <laughs> Give me a room service, please. Yes, sir. Room service. Is Inspector Faraday down there? Oh, yes, he is. He's right here by the phone. Put him on, will you? Yes, sir. Here he is. Hello. Now, this is room 802. I'd like you to send up a roast beef sandwich and a glass of milk, please. Look, Blanky, will you quit playing games? I'm not playing games, Faraday. I'm serious. You say Fred Arlen was killed sometime after 816 last night. Because at 8.16, he called room service for a sandwich. Now, is that much right? Yeah, that's right. Can a dead man make a telephone call? No, but somebody else can fake it. You think I'm in room 802, don't you? Oh, aren't you? No. Nope. I'm in a booth in the lobby using the house phone. Maybe using the same phone that John used at 8.16 to call room service after he'd killed his brother. Very clever, Blanky. Except for one little point. You have no way of knowing Fred Arlen was dead before 816. Mm, nice point, Faraday. But I do know Fred was dead before 816. The parking ticket I got last night when he was killed shows I took my car out of the garage at 812. So what? So I'd just come from Fred Arlen's room, and he was dead. And it's a good five minutes walk from here to that garage. I thought I'd find you were mixed up in this. I'm not the one that's mixed up. You fell for John's story about being down here in the lobby just the way he wanted you to fall for it. I bet Fred was dead, well, a good half hour before John established his alibi. Yeah, but what about the gun? It belongs to the girl. She told you the truth, Faraday. Didn't she say she'd just moved to an apartment on Davis Lane under an assumed name so Fred Arlen couldn't find her? Yeah, so what? Remember when John denied he'd stolen the gun from her? He said he'd never been on Davis Lane in his life? Well, that's right, Blackie. He did. That's so right, Inspector. It proves he did steal her gun. Unless he followed her, he couldn't have known where she lived, and I've just proved how he could have been down here in the lobby after his brother was dead and built himself an alibi. Blackie, I think you're right. You think I'm right? Sure, it's as simple as the alphabet. Now, 
but it wasn't simple when I started. There were three suspects. Carol Williams, John Arlen, and Bill Andrews, a cripple who could walk. So how did he fit into this? He didn't. He hated Fred Arlen, sure, but Faraday, you can get him on another charge. He was temporarily paralyzed after an accident two years ago and has been posing as a cripple ever since to collect a lot of heavy accident insurance compensation. Well, that's not my department, but I'll see that it's investigated. All I'm interested in is this guy, John Arlen. I'm going to grab him, but quick. You better be quick, Faraday. He outsmarted you once. Yeah, but remember, I've got the goods on him this time. Sure you have, but remember, you've got the goods on him only because I supplied the material. you enjoyed this latest Uncle Eric Presents episode. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode. Please check back often and make sure to subscribe to my podcast so you won't miss the new exciting episodes. In the meantime, scroll up or down to find other exciting episodes to listen to. Don't forget to visit UncleEric.com to see and listen to all the program categories and episodes. There are also hundreds of the old classic crime and detective television show episodes you can watch as well. They're a hoot to watch. That's Uncle Eric. Eric.com. If you like this episode, please consider buying Uncle Eric a cup of coffee at the support link below. Thanks a million. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>